40 years, so <laughs> since I was like 10. And, okay, okay, <laughs> stop pointing. Um, she absolutely has done an amazing thing in business. She started business years ago, and in her first year of business, she won the business of the year. Small business. Of Small year. business of the year award. In your first year, come on. <laughs> Who does that? Okay. So her specialty is helping businesses succeed. So she gives high-tech solutions with high-touch strategies for high-five results. Thank you so much in helping me welcome my friend, Susan Douglas. Okay. For a long time. I'm gonna, can you guys hear me okay? I'd rather not use this if I don't have to, so let me, let me see. Dan, how do you turn part of this thing down? Except that you're recording it, so you might want to. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm okay. Okay. I'll leave this over here. Maybe it'll just come down. All right. Okay. So, I'm really excited to be speaking because actually Pat and I knew each other from Disco Day. She had a group called the Dancing Machines, and we actually danced. At we stayed there, a few other places, press theater. Um, but years later, I met her at a woman's event, and we both decided that we really liked to speak and share information with people. Did you guys take that uh, survey when you were in high school that kind of told you what you would be good at? Yeah. Was it right on, or was it kind of way out? Mine was right on. Right on, mm -hmm. yeah, because I think we kind of intuitively know our power and where our gifts are, right? Somewhere inside us, we kind of know. Uh, when I took that uh, course, I got labeled as a teacher, and I thought, I'm not gonna teach a group of high school students. Who wanna teach people like me? Because I was in high school at the time. But it turns out that I really love to teach. I love sharing information, helping people move forward with their life, and in this case, with their business. Um, Pat mentioned a story, and I'm gonna come back to that in a sec, but the reason I call this foundational marketing because my first, my business that I started 22 years ago was in building websites. And websites aren't hard to build if you know the technology. They really aren't because the tools have gotten more sophisticated. The issue is when I talk to a business person, I say, tell me what's unique about your business. Why would people want to do business with you? And they kind of get stuck. They're not quite sure what to say. And what I started to decide was I have to go deeper than just what the message is. I have to find out where their gifts are, what their brand is, what their story is. And once you do that, then you can kind of share that with people because then you become genuine, you become authentic. And you know, Pat's doing a, a section of our speaking course on no like trust. People have to know you, they have to get to like you, then they get to trust you, then they'll do business with you. Uh, if you were here for the presentation uh, on social media last month, she mentioned, if you are in business, you don't necessarily have to brand yourself. And I started thinking about that, and I said, yes, you do. Because in a, especially in a room full of ladies, women, we develop personal relationships. You have to brand yourself. That becomes really, really important, especially if you take your brand onto the World Wide Web where you have millions of comp competitors versus just a few. So my goal for you today is to walk away with at least one thing that you can do to kind of expand your brand, okay? Now, uh, let me see if I can get this PowerPoint working by myself. Oh, yes, okay. So, I'll take, tell you the first time I decided to go to a business event. Rancho Cordova Chamber uh, was in the year 1999, and I had been in Toastmasters a few years, and I had 30 seconds. 30 seconds is not a lot of time, right? And I thought, if I just stood up there and I said, my name is, and this is what I do, that nobody would come up and talk with me because it was kind of boring. And because I was in Toastmasters, I know you can pack a lot into 30 seconds if you practice and plan for it. So this is what I said. Hi, my name is Susan. Before I tell you what I do, I want you to remember the last time you were talking to a potential client, a coworker, maybe a boss. You had this awesome idea and they just weren't getting it. <laughs> Wasn't that frustrating? you might have felt like you're up a creek without a paddle. Well, I'm in the paddle business. I teach businesses how to build communication bridges in 30 seconds or less. I'm doing a workshop next week, so see me after. I also am a member of Toastmasters, and I can come to your place of business and do a brown bag for you. I'm Susan at getgarnettinggear.com. 
And from that 30 seconds, I got two people came to my workshop, two people approached me about a brown bag, and one person joined Toastmasters. So I went from zero to five in the same 30 seconds. So what I did was, um, I talk about this magic formula, which is interesting to me. I mentioned we kind of intuitively know where we're coming from, and this is part of branding. I kind of didn't use the paddle story for a long, long time. I'm resurrecting it because I'm finding that's very sticky. People remember that. In mm -hmm. fact, a year after I did that 30 second commercial, a lady came up and said, you're the paddle lady. <laughs> <laughs> she might not have been able to tell what I did, but that stickiness is part of that getting to know you. Because if we have a lot of opportunity to meet people, you want to be the top one, two, three people that they remember and that they relate to, okay? So I want you to start thinking about your brand. Now, pull out a business card if you don't have one handy, because I'm going to have to take some notes. Um, so first of all, I want you to go forward, maybe a year, maybe five years. Think of a stretch goal for yourself in terms of your income or in terms of your business. It might be monetary, it might not be monetary, but I want you to kind of project forward on what you really want. What would really excite you, where you go, woohoo, <laughs> you know? Um, that's the, the passion that you really need, because think of this. Your audience cannot get more excited about your business than you are, right? So if it takes on a scale of one to 10, people have to get to a five to even think about doing business with you. If your excitement level is a three, they're not gonna hit that five. You have to get them to a higher number. And the more pricey your offer is, the higher the number likely will need to be. You can start them at an entry point, you know, at a low number at that five, but as they get to know you, like you, and trust you, they can gradually escalate to a higher price point. Okay, so that's part of the strategy. Okay, so the, the, the thing I tell about the paddle, so I've resurrected the paddle, I've leaned into the paddle story. So one of the things you can pick up at my table, and I have this little cloth. I did workshops with uh, Ranch Cordova Chamber years ago before COVID, and completely going online. So actually, this what's on what's in it for university.com is a bit, is still live. It's got courses on it now. But you'll see down here in the bottom left there is an expand my brand. That was my business name back before COVID. I've now turned it to Blaze Your Brand and incorporated mm -hmm. the paddle because it was more in alignment with my brand. Blazing the trail, trail blazer, and actually that's the personality style that I assessed. Uh, there's a lady named Kay Putnam. Several of us in the courses took her personality style. I'm gonna use Janelle as an example. When we did your strategy session, she says, you know, I'm not the Rodeo Drive decorator. I'm the person that can come in and take what you have, make it look awesome for very little or no money. Right, Janelle? Right. And I said, you're the gal next door. You're the gal that I would go to and say, hey, Janelle, would you come over and help me with my thing? You're so good at that. Mm -hmm. So we have a business name for her called Gal Next Door Decor. Yep. And it turns out her personality style was, do you remember? The girl next door. The girl next door. <laughs> it was, you know, so Pat is the entertainer, you know, so it really seems to fit. So that would be one of my suggestions and I can send you a link to her course. But it gave me, the, in my name is Explore. Duh. <laughs> I love the outdoors, I love the paddle story, so I was able to tie that uh, personality style, brand style, into my business. Okay, so that's why you're gonna see a lot of paddle stuff, mm -hmm. all right? So imagine yourself with that goal, that stretch goal that's going to make you go, woohoo. Can you, you all do that for me? Woohoo! <laughs> Projecting forward. Okay. <laughs> so the thing I've learned with a lot of businesses, and you're not the only one, you may be maybe dead weight free, but a lot of you are carrying around dead weight. Mm -hmm. There's, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm not talking about physical weight. I'm talking about baggage. Mm -hmm. You know what it might be? I have a lot of clients because I'm in technology. Oh, I hate Facebook. Or I don't know how to get the computer to do that. That's dead weight. What you gotta do is learn to chuck the dead weight so you can move forward. Part of it isn't knowing the goal. It's realizing what's holding you back. What's keeping you stuck. What's keeping you not reaching a, a, a stretch goal? So that's why I'm using this analogy, believe me. I wish I had something lighter to carry around <laughs> for this demo, because it is pretty heavy. But so imagine yourself in this four, debt weight free. Okay, so let's go back from branding from the inside out. 
I'm going to give you my magic formula, which is the secret to the commercial, but I'm just kind of blazing through it because I want to focus on the deeper stuff. But I promised in my uh, promo that I was going to share this. Oops. Oops. How am I going backwards? There we go. The message. So obviously with your brand, you have a message. I like to tell people, start with the problem you solve. Don't say, I sell this, because we're not interested yet, right? But if, I, if you say, I can help you solve the problem of aging or the problem of um, communication or something mm -hmm. like that, talk, start with the problem you solve. You remember in my 30 second commercial, I didn't say how I was gonna solve the problem. I posted a question that said, have you ever been in a situation where you couldn't communicate in a really quick way? I didn't say how much it was gonna cost. I didn't say you know, how it was gonna do it. I just said, have you ever had that problem? So focus on problem solution. Questions are a great way to lead in anything. The answer to the question is the question. <laughs> all right, all marketers say this. This is not rocket science. You gotta focus on your target market. So like if you take photography like Kim, she's focused on Google tours, headshots. But if, somebody, if she focused on something that, like bridal pictures, you have to be specific. You can't say, I can take pictures of anything, because then people who need what Kim has are going to say, well, I'm, I can't see what she can do for me. So you have to be very specific in your message for the target market. You can have several messages, but for that one 30-second commercial, that one video you post, focus on the one thing for that specific person so they'll go, oh, I need that, right? Okay. Grab their attention. This has been part of the magic formula since day one. And it goes back to branding. You have to be a purple cow in a brown cow world. Seth Godin says that, right? You want to stand out. This is why I'm going to take my hat off now. Hopefully, hopefully I don't have too bad hair. But you know, standing out. And did you realize that I looked at statistics, 80 to 93% of communication is visual. It's not what you say. It's the impression you make when you show up in person. It's the video. It's all that. So I know Joey's going to talk about that a little later, but that's why where you know representing your brand and everything that you do is really really important. We're going to come back to branding like that. That makes sense actually. Involve your emotions. I mentioned that somebody can't get to a five, six, seven if you're at a three. So you've got to want up your emotional connection with your business, but also be able to kind of engage other people, get them excited about what you offer. And I call this the, the emoto score because there are things that you can do to help yourself get more excited. It's about dead weight. I'll tell a quick story. Um, the first time I had to make a sales call, it took me 35 minutes to pick up the phone. <laughs> Because I was in my head, I was going, oh, what happens if they say this? Or what happens if I embarrass myself? And I'd never been in sales before, so that was part of the, the dead weight. How I, old were you then? I was 43. Three? No, 43. <laughs> this is like after I left corporate. I had been in corporate America at Aerojet and Hewlett Packard for 23 years. I said, I'm, go I'm doing something else. I had no clue. First sales call, 35 minutes. I timed myself. And I realized that I could not keep doing that. I mean, that starts to add up, you know, in the course of a week, 35 minutes to pick up the phone. So I learned a technique from a, a mentor, Red Burn Moses, who actually, that, that's gone now. I actually can get there in nanoseconds past that. And it's an amazing thing that he, has, he uses the emoto, emoticon analogy as well. But again, for, don't, I, I encourage you not to take a lot of notes. I'm glad you're kind of paying attention because I promise to send you videos on this. I'm just kind of hitting some top, you know, highlights. So you might say, oh, I want to learn a little bit more about that. So just put that on your card. We're going to have a drawing a little bit later. And the last thing is the call to action. Make sure when you do a 30 second commercial, a video, give them something to do. You know, say, visit my website or see me or, you know, give me your phone number or something. Because it's like people get distracted, right? You go, oh, that was a great commercial, but I don't know what to do. You want to make sure you lead them to the next step. Make it easy for them, right? Okay, so that's the magic formula. Um, and actually, one of the prizes I'm going to give away, I found this when we were on our call. This is a first edition, 2005 book that I did on communication magic. It's got the magic formula in it. It's got a bunch of quotes. 
It has my fax number on it. That's how old it is. <laughs> so so somebody has to win it. No, no, no fax number. In fact, my phone number is a landline, so I have to change that as well. But yeah, so the magic formula has been around that long. Oh, okay, got cut off. So as Catherine Hepburn said, as one goes through life, one learns that if you don't paddle the opening, you don't move. Mm -hmm. This is why I had to go deep dive. I could give people all this information about their marketing message and how to stand out, and blood, but if they don't paddle their own canoe, I can't push them there, right? And it's probably because they have some dead weight somewhere. Mm -hmm. And everybody's dead weight's a little bit different. So I've got to help them get rid of that. That's my new mission. All right. So I come up with a new term. I call it the mojo. Everybody has it. You all got mojo. You just need to kind of define it a little bit. The end in the mojo is not the message, it's your mission statement. Remember I talked about that level three and excitement about your business, what's your big mission? It's not just to make sales, right? I know you're not like that. It's to make a difference in somebody's life, to make it better, healthier, impactful, whatever that is. So if you don't have a mission statement, write it down. You don't have to put it on your website unless you want to, but internally you need to own that, okay? That's part of um, how you're going to get excited about your business. Okay. Whoops. Uh, I think, uh-oh. All right. I'm just going to decide memory. Okay. O is objectives. What is your what's in it for me? That's usually why you start a business. There's got to be something in it for you. And it doesn't have to be monetary. It just might be satisfaction. It just might be the joy. Like with Jeanette, I know she loves to be in the kitchen. That gives you joy. And the fact that you can have a business is great. That's why it's good to be your own boss, right? You can find what you love and give yourself a job. <laughs> but you have to know what the objective is. You have to say, okay, my goal for this is because I know that Joy wants to leave Macy. She wants to have her own business. That's her motivation. So have that written down. Writing things down makes a difference. I'm not the first person to say that. Getting it on paper, Getting a vision board, putting it up so you can see it, will help you stay from that, get you that from that three to your four, five, six, seven. All right. So kind of measure where you are. There we go. So that's the what's in it for me, and what's your motor score with that? How exciting is that for you? Then it's the what's in it for them. What's the win for them? What's the problem you solve? What's the benefit for doing business with you? Because you have competition, we all do. So why should they choose you among all their different options in the world to do business with you? So you have to get them to that. That's why that involve their emotions in the magic formula is important. It's how do you engage them. This is a new one for me. The what's in it for others? Okay, I'm true confession here. I just turned 68. I am now taking Social Security, and I've got two pensions from when I worked for Aerojet and the state. So I've got income that kind of keeps me pretty comfortable right now. I don't have to work as hard as I did this last week, because I did a lot this last week. But I decided, and I was on a um, uh, webinar, and they were talking about, what if you could earn $100,000 extra than more than what you need? You could devote that to charities. You could take time off and volunteer. That got me excited. And that's why I was in the Panda Paddle, World Wildlife Fund. I wanted to spend more of my time making a difference outside of my business. So that may be the motivation for you. Not just looking within your business, but what beyond could you do? I'm sorry that Robin Padilla can't be here because I know with her business, they're helping people, women in traffic situations. So that's kind of a neat thing to have already in your business. But if you don't have that, figure out what it is for you. And again, because I'm the explorer, and I actually have an environmental degree, this is perfect for me. It kind of all fit in together. All right. So then it's the justification. This is where a lot of the dead weight comes in. I don't know when you started your business how you felt, but it was like, why me? <laughs> I just started. I don't have the experience. I don't have all the skills I need. But you have to believe in yourself. It's that mindset thing. That's where I think a lot of people get stuck is they don't have the belief in themselves or the motivation enough to reach that stretch goal. So again, you need to, if you, if you have a stretch goal, and hopefully you do, not just kind of the comfort zone thing, somebody said, well, they call it the comfort zone for a reason. 
<laughs> I'd rather be there than other places. Mm -hmm. But if you have a stretch goal, if you want to raise money for charity or something, you have to kind of start get a mindset around that. Say, yes, I can. Because, you know, they say if you think you can or you think you're, you can't, you're right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Henry Ford said that, right? So you've got to kind of get your mind around the justification behind you. And that becomes part of the branding as well. Um, does anybody else watch uh, The Dog Whisperer or Caesar 911 mm -hmm. or something? Dog owners? I love that it. show. Because one, I can say, oh, my dog isn't as bad. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's one of my motivations. But also, the other, he's just kind of walk in a room and the dog behaves. It's his energy. It's his power, the inner power he has. So what you need to do is own that power. When you walk into a room, be that energy that people are attracted to, that they understand you know what you're doing, you know what you're talking about, you're the go-to person. And it doesn't have to be anything you say. Remember, we talked about uh, 80 to 93% of communication is visual. Then you could tell a person who feels confident, right? That energy, and that's what the dogs can tell from Caesar. So be that kind of energy-centric person. So oh, shifting your energy. And then start building your brand. I really recommend taking Kay's, um, it's free. And there's 12 different archetypes. I mentioned magician and uh, down next door and explorer. Marilyn uh, Lapkus, not Marilyn, I'm sorry, Marilyn Robinson is also explorer. And it suits her because her life's next journey seems to fit. So again, I think it, internally we kind of understand where our power is. But if you take this quiz, it's gonna give you a lot of recommendations about how to present yourself, you know, what your logo might look like, etc. It's a lot of fun too. I believe it is fun. <laughs> all right, all right. Let me kind of tell you a couple, couple quick stories. How much time do I have there? Oh, oh I forgot. Oh, she forgot. <laughs> oh, that, don't tell that to a, a, a talker. Right now it's 1227. All right, so, so another five minutes? Okay. Okay. Um, what time <laughs> did you end up, Jan? Did we start on time? Okay, so if you can t t tell me when it's 25 till, and I'll wrap up it uh, in five minutes after that. Okay. okay. And, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let me tell a couple quick, st quick stories. Uh, Pat mentioned the, um, the award I got. So my very first year in business, I went to the Rancho Cordova Chamber. I met with the then CEO, and he told me that they had a tourism group. At that time, 50% of the hotel rooms in Sacramento County were along 50 corridor, and they're still there. I mean, some intersections are like three hotels, right? And they couldn't fill the rooms because who would want to stay in Rancho Cordova? I mean, they come for business. They go to Aerojet, they go to wherever, but they leave because they didn't have a story. So what we needed to do was create a story. So I convinced the CEO to launch a website because they're tr they said, well, we have no money, we have no website. Their target market is everybody else in Rancho Cordova, right? They have to reach out to the world. So um, I convinced their CEO that they needed a website. We ended up raising 12,500 from the four hotels because we said, you can benefit from this. We're gonna create a story around Rancho Cordova. We built a website called Rush to Rancho, which I like because it had the river through it. They have kayaking, they have uh, Apple Hill. There was a lot to sell. So we built this website, and my favorite remembrance of all this was about nine months after that initial conversation. It took us three months to build the website. Six months after that, we were at a trade show downtown. Our competition, San Francisco, Lake Tahoe, Carmel. <laughs> this is how Rancho Cordova had to compete. So if you ever say, I can't compete against my competition, yes, you can. You just have to have a good story. We had a line out our booth because we had a spinning wheel, we were giving away stuff, we had a really good story. The best part of this is that 20 years later, there is now a division of Ranch Cordova, the tourism division, that has six employees, starting from a zero budget. So if you ever say to yourself, I can never compete, you just have to have that brand, that good story, that connection with people. Another quick story. Um, I was helping a local farmer's market get started. And we decided to start a community website that kind of told people where to go and what to do. So we came up with the name Bob's Pocket. And because it was like, you want it personal, right? Yeah. We didn't want just community website, you know. <laughs> we wanted something personal, Bob's Pocket. So Bob is the person, the story is, Bob is the person who knows 
where you go. See, Bob, where would you go for Mexican food? Oh, I happen to have the business card in my pocket. That was the story, right? So we had our shirts made and we have the website. We're promoting it at Farmer's Market. And one time my husband went to the chicken festival and I walk in, he had gotten there before I, and they said, oh, we were just talking to Bob. <laughs> and I go, there, there's no Bob. <laughs> That's Bill. <laughs> but they just assumed that it was Bob. So we ended up making these buttons that said, not Bob. <laughs> and we all wore these buttons, you know. So uh, the reason I tell you this is because Pat is a, a brilliant at humor. And that's why being a Toastmaster, that, that came from my experience in being okay to be funny. Because if you make people laugh, they tend to like you a little bit better, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So get comfortable with your inner joy. You know, have fun with your business. You're the boss. Yeah. You can have fun with your business, so just make up your mind that that's what you want to do. Incorporate fun. All right, let's move on. I'm trying to use the rock as the mouth. It doesn't work. <laughs> okay, this is good. Oh, offerings. I'm, I'm just going to really touch on this really quick. So this is where your strategies come in and systems. I was talking to um, Jeanette, uh, Jeanette about systems. So automated computer systems can save you a boatload of time. And I'm going to be offering Widget Wednesdays, which is my technology kind of how-to thing about things like that. I think that would be something you're interested in. So I have a lot of resources, and again, I can't cover in detail, but on your card, if there was something that sparked your interest, whether it's magic or the mojo or something, write it down, and um, we will follow up and give you resource links. All right. So I actually went hiking up in Arizona. I couldn't find the picture, but they had stacked these rocks, right? So once you jettison and ditch the, the dead weight, it actually will become an asset for you. It's kind of like a testimonial from where you were to where you are now. So I like this visual because it kind of shows dead weight is not a bad thing. It's just something to be aware of and make a decision if you don't need it anymore, if it is holding you back. And there's different kinds of dead weight. There's the mindset dead weight, strategy dead weight, technology dead weight, branding. And again, I think if you can say, you even need a little jettison in there, even if it's only this big. Every little bit makes a difference. If you get really creative, <laughs> you can do something like this. This is about the fun thing. This may go on my um, screensaver. I have things that inspire me on in my screensaver. So again, taking that dead weight and making it work for you. Because I know you can all get there, right? You're, you're your own boss. You can make your own business whatever you want. You just have to kind of make the decision. It all starts with a decision, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. A decision to come here, a decision to do different things in your business, try something scary, get out of the comfort zone so that you can progress. All right, so let me um, finish up with these couple offerings. So the thing that I worked so hard on the last week, uh, I'm taking an, a, a quiz, how to create a quiz. I mentioned questions are really good ways to kind of engage people. One of the guys said, well, make a quiz. That's like seven to 12 questions. I thought, I'm gonna learn how to do that. Uh, I got behind on the homework, so I spent the last week doing like six weeks worth of work <laughs> and got it done for you guys, because I wanted this as something for you to try. Um, you're gonna gain insight, so you might find out where your dead weight might be by taking this quiz. You're gonna receive tips and resources. So if you wanna take the quiz, go to blazeyourbrand.com. And what I'm gonna do is, it, the, the uh, quiz will always be available, but if you do it by Friday, especially if you do the branding thing, I really want to help you. So I'm offering a free 30-minute session just to kind of discuss what you learned and figure out what you might do differently, kind of one-on-one -on -one personal stuff. Lastly, now I'm doing on time, Lorraine. You got 30 seconds. Oh, I got 30 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> right, I'm tired. Um, so Jamie helped me with some art, and I mentioned that I made some art. I'm still doing a fundraiser for the uh, Panda Paddle. And what I was offering is for every donation that you make, I triple the value in consultation. So if you make a $20 donation to the pan pads, I'm, I wanna hit my goal. Um, you get $60 worth of time, consultation, whatever you want. So you'll get the free stuff, but that will just add to it. So if you would take that card, and this you can do the afterwards towards the end, I'm gonna put my hat up here. Do you like my hat? I like your hat. I like my hat too. Um, you put your card in there, 
I'm going to do a drawing, and the, the winner is going to get my vintage, like one of a kind, first edition <laughs> communication magic book. I'm glad I found it. And then also a book of quotes. I love quotes. Quotes are great ways to communicate yes. with people. This is from Marty Maskell and Toastmasters. So, does anybody have a 10 second question? <laughs> no, we're good. Okay, thank you so much. I so enjoyed talking to you guys.